What is happening, fishing friends? Welcome to another episode of Debo's Fishing. What in the world do we have here today? Yep, you guessed it. Hey, diddly ho, neighbor. It's the Ned Rig. That's right. Fall is here. Winter's around the corner. This is a deadly bait this time of year. So what is it? What is the Ned Rig? I'm going to take you through that. I'm going to take you through some modifications that I've learned fishing it the past few years that have made me more successful with it. What you partnered up with, the rod reel line, how you approach presenting this and where you're going to present it, how to fish it, and what happens when you get a bite. So the Ned Rig, simply explained, it's two pieces, the jig head and a soft plastic. Now the jig head, there are a few different ones you can use. They're all going to have the same qualities though, or the qualities that you should look for when you're selecting a jig head. They're going to be a moon shape or a rounded shape. And those shapes lend themselves very well to standing up. Now, probably the most popular soft plastic to put on these is the Z-Man Elastec Ned Rig, the Ned TRD. This bait is awesome because it floats and it will present your Ned Rig like that. Now, I'll get into it later, but you can also use a Cinco style bait, but just be aware that a lot of those are not going to float. So, you want the rounded head, so on the bottom it lends itself to floating up rocking on that head really well. They're also going to be small light wire hooks. We'll get into that, but you don't want a big, huge, fat 5 aught hook. You want a lightweight hook to go with your lightweight line and setup. Okay, so those are the jig heads you'll be looking for. Now the soft plastic, as I said, I usually go with the Z-Man um, Finesse TRD. The, this is the two and a half inch, where there also comes in a four inch, the larger bait. Um, now, most people believe the bigger the bait you fish, the bigger the bites you're going to get. I've had success both ways. I've fished the small one and caught, you know, three pounders. I've fished the big one and caught little tiny fish that were just barely bigger than this bait. So it really goes both ways. Really, it's going to depend on what you have confidence in, your lake, your fishery, what works for you. So those are the jig heads. Those are the plastics. So what are some modifications I do to these? Let's take a look. All right, so modifications. There are two main modifications that I've been using that have helped me a lot when fishing the Ned Rig. So the first one isn't as much of a modification as it is a money and plastic saver. So this is the back end of a Senko, five inch Senko. You know, normally my four out hook would be up here and this is where the hook point normally would be coming in on my Senko and that part gets, you know, tore up. The top half of it where my hook has been been tore up from catching fish. So I just take that back part of it, cut it off, and if you look, it's the perfect imitation for a Senko. Now, notice that these are made of completely different materials. The Ned TRD is extremely stretchy. The Senko is not. If you pull that, it's got so much salt in there, it's going to rip apart. Now, this does have its place. When I get to the ways to fish it, the Senko style bait works just as well, um, if not better, than this in some ways of fishing it, and I'll go over that. So that's the first little modification or hack that I use. Save your old Senkos and use them for Ned Rigs later in the year. So that's number one. Number two, this was something I learned from Brian Latimer. I wish I could take the, the credit, but I cannot. I saw it on one of his videos and it is awesome. So the Ned Rig, when you fish it around trees or rocks, sometimes it can get hung up. So the way to fix that is to rig this weedless. Now this only works with the, the Z-Man Finesse TRD or any of their TRDs with the Elastec because of how strong the plastic is. So I'm gonna run my hook up through, okay, just like that. Now this is only to get the line threaded on. So I've got some eight pound line here. I'm gonna put the line just under the barb of that hook. I'm gonna bring my plastic up over it like that. I will do some movie magic and get a knot tied on this. Just like that, we got our knot. Thank you for some movie magic there. Okay, so the reason I've done this is because you will slide your Ned Rig down onto the top of that hook, onto your jig head, and you're gonna take the back part and rig it just like you would a Texas rig, like so. And what that gives you is a weedless Ned Rig. Now, this is awesome for rocks because when you're going along, it's not as apt to get stuck in the rocks when that soft part hits. The soft part hits and it just kind of rolls and pulls through. 
Now, as far as sitting on the bottom, it's still gonna sit up like this, straight up, as long as you're using this Elastec. And as far as the bite, I've got that so it's just barely sticking out there. This is awesome for rocks. That head bounces off. It's a very cool little modification that will help save you some baits. Okay, so you've seen the two modifications that I use. Let's go ahead and move on to, uh, well, what's my approach? First, let's talk about trees and brush. The Ned Rig is a great bait to fish this stuff. You just have to be careful and remember your approach. V's for trees. I'm not gonna be throwing over real deep um, into the, you know, the midst, the real thick stuff because I'm only fishing, if I can get away with it in open water, four pound line, six pound line is a go-to or eight when I'm fishing around brush like this. But I'm gonna attack the V's. So spots like this where I can throw between and get out, especially if you're a bank fisherman, you don't want to be throwing all the way over the top of this. You know, if, let's say it's just above the water here. You don't want to throw all the way over top of this, have a fish catch it here and swim down. You're over this branch. He's probably got you under branches over here. So you want to fish V's, a V here, throw your lure in here, a V, anywhere where your lure is going to come straight back out to you, a V here. You might have to move around the cover, but trust me, it will make fishing brush and sticks a whole lot easier if you remember to fish the V's on the trees. The next big thing you want to think about with this little bait is accuracy and presentation. So on the brush, accuracy and presentation is going to be big, you know, fishing in those V's. But on grass lines, drop-offs, isolated rocks, that's where this is going to shine, especially in the fall to winter transition or late fall. Fish love to be sitting on the drop-offs. That's a place where they can go out deep, where the water is going to be warmer, and they can come back up shallow to feed. Ned Rig, in my opinion, honestly really shines in clear to just sort of stained water. Once you start getting into the, you know, the dingier or um, muddy water, the Ned Rig just doesn't do as well. It doesn't displace a lot of water. It doesn't have any movement to displace water. It's just a stick. You stay in the zone. Okay, talking about the strike zone. So, for example, let's say this is a rock pile. I'm throwing it all around the rock pile. I'm going to let it fall on slack line here, pop it a couple times, and then I'm reeling it back in. If I throw that out and that's 10 yards from the boat or 10 yards off land, I'm not going to fish it the whole way back. That's not going to be an, an area where I'm going to catch a lot of fish. Focus on the strike zone next to the grass lines, especially those drop offs and around the wood, stay accurate with it, and I guarantee you will catch more fish on this. So how do you fish these? Well, there are a few ways that work excellent to fish the Ned Rig. The one thing that stays in common with all those is the fall. So on your cast, you wanna make sure that you let the Ned Rig fall on slack line, that is important. When it falls down, it's gonna kinda of give a, a spirally spin motion down. It's gonna look completely lifelike as it's spiraling down as opposed to if you throw it over here and I'm trying to trying to get it to fall straight down over here, if I throw it and right away engage my bail or don't let it fall on slack line, it's gonna swim like this and glide down. I don't want that. I want it to fall on slack line. So from there, you can do small hops after it gets on the bottom and work it a little bit. Pop, pop, let it sit. Remember it's gonna stand straight up, pop, pop, pop. Okay, so you've got the pop. You've got the drag after it hits, you're just gonna slowly drag it along, leave it alone. Slowly drag it along, leave it alone. And that's where earlier I said that when you use the, the stick baits, this is a, a technique that work great, works great for those because I'm not letting it sit and wanting it to stand straight up. I'm dragging it along and then it kind of falls. So it looks like a, a fish or a, a bait, you know, just barely holding on with just a little bit of life to it. So with that rig, I like to have the rounded head and the stick bait and it works awesome. As opposed to the actual Z-Man head, I can find it here, the actual Z-Man head, when you drag it, it's at a 90 degree angle. So when I drag that in the rocks and such, I've got a really high chance of having my knot get caught up in something, um, get some nicks on it and break when I'm just dragging it along. When you hop it, you don't notice that as much because you're bringing it off the bottom. The lift and drop, if you notice that you're really getting bit right on that, that initial drop, you can try lifting your rod tip up a couple feet and letting it fall and spiral down again on slack line. Very important. Not taut line. 
pull it up, let it fall on that slack bind before you reel or anything. As soon as you see it, you know, either do something weird or change motion, then you can reel into it and see if you have a fish, but you have to let it fall on slack line. So when you get a bite, the Ned rig, the you don't want to be setting a hook on these. All right. So you throw it out, you feel a bite. All you're going to do is reel down on it. I lift it up over my right shoulder at a 45 degree uh, angle and just start reeling into it. There's no popping, there's no hook setting, no jarring. I'm just going to reel into that fish. These light wire hooks, you notice I'm just barely touching my finger and it's biting into it. That's what's so awesome about these little tiny light wire hooks. You can imagine it as a, a needle, a needle versus a big thick nail. If, I'm, if you're going to get a shot, do you want to get a shot with a needle? Or do you want to get a shot with a big, huge, thick nail? Heck no, you want the little needle because it goes in easier. There's less resistance, less friction. It's a tiny, tiny little diameter piece of wire that's going in that fish's mouth. Once you've done that, you want to make sure that you keep a bend in your rod. That's the big reason for fishing a medium or a medium light action rod with a light line is I'm going to use my line, my rod, my drag to play that fish. So you want to have your drag to where if that fish starts to pull a little bit, it's going to take out your drag. I'm keeping the bend in my uh, rod the whole time. Very important. What setups do I recommend? Well, generally, I'm always going to throw these on a medium light or a medium action spinning rod. It's going to have a good parabolic bend. It's going to stay bent and allow me to fight that fish as opposed to a heavy action rod that is very stiff with the line I'm going to be using, a light line, if it starts to bend that rod, it's just going to be too powerful and it's going to break your line. That's why you want a medium light to a medium action uh, spinning, re spinning rod. I always, on my spinning reels, run, f for a finesse application like this, 15-pound braid to my leader. The leader is the most important. If I'm in real clear water without any sort of obstruction, no big rocks, no brush, I'll usually go down to a 4-pound line. If I'm fishing around any sort of vegetation or anything where I'm, you know, going to possibly get a little bit of stuff on my line, I go up to a six. I go up all the way to an eight or ten if I'm fishing around brush. Now it's not going to be as much of a, much of a finesse application then. When I start getting up to that heavier line, the fish can see it. It does make a difference. You fish four pound all day and switch up to ten pound, and you will notice a different difference in getting bites. So, don't be afraid of the light line. One thing that does matter with your reel is it has to have very good drag. Smooth drag that's not herky-jerky, smooth drag that pulls out. Now, with the medium light or medium rod, you're not going to bend this hook out. You can see, this is just me grabbing it with two little fingers, I can bend that hook out almost. All right, These are not strong hooks, but they will hold and they will not bend if you're not using a powerful rod as well as coupling that with a reel that has really good drag. So if that fish does turn his head and go to make a move and try to pull that out, your line's not going to break. It's just going to start letting drag off your, your reel. Very important in fighting a fish in a finesse application. Can't stress that enough. Don't horse the fish in. Tire the fish out. So he's going to make a run. Reel up your slack. Bring him in the boat. If he makes a run again, reel up your slack. Not horsing him. You can't fish this like a frog throw it out there and as soon as you get a bite, set it hard and start cranking them in, you're either going to straighten the hook or break the line. Remember those modifications, the weedless modification and your stick bait. They work really well. They will save you some money in the long run too. Uh, make sure that your approach is accurate. You hit those high percentage areas, grass lines, wood, and especially the drop-offs this time of year. Uh, as well as any sort of isolated rocks. Those are going to be awesome, especially if you're uh, up north fishing smallmouth. Once you get onto the main lake or out on some of those flats, oftentimes those flats are just big, huge flats of land, and the only thing that's down there is going to be a little clump of rocks. If you can find those isolated rock piles, this is killer. You will get lots of fish on it. Use it as a follow-up bait. Um, you know, if you're running a moving bait through there and catch a few, don't be afraid to go back over that exact same area with a, a finesse Ned rig because you can get some of those cleanup fish that you wouldn't have caught before. So how to fish it. Remember, there's always going to be a slack line presentation no matter what way you're fishing it. Throw it out there and let it fall on slack line so it kind of uh, corkscrews down. Very important. You can hop it. 
you can drag it. Just got to find out what works for you. Sometimes you can even reel it real slow over the rock so it kind of pops and hits those things. Just got to listen to the fish. And listening to the fish means you have to try different new things for them to tell you what they want. Uh, once you get that bite, remember just reel into it. Don't set the hook. Reel into it. Lift the rod up. Keep the rod bent. Make sure you've got your drag set so if the fish does make a run for it, he peels drag and doesn't break your line. So that's everything in a nutshell, guys. I hope this helped. Drop a comment below if you find these helpful. I would really appreciate it. And leave any sort of uh, comments for new videos down there. I love getting comments from people and hearing what they have to say. Drop that down there. Remember, no matter what, keep casting, guys. You can't catch the fish if you're not casting. Until next time, take care.